Hi everyone and welcome back to the Cloud Techs Club. I hope everyone is doing great and you are enjoying the whatever the content we are uploading. So in our previous session, we explored the basics of CI CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment and continuous delivery, which is one of the key pillars of the DevOps ecosystem. Understanding how code moves from development stage to deployment stage. CI CD helps us to perform that particular process smoothly within the production environments and within the enterprises. Now let's take uh, things a step forward and uh, we will deep dive into the GitLab, which is again uh, one of the powerful DevOps platform uh, that brings everything together in one place. Uh, from planning and uh, coding to testing and deploying of software artifacts. So GitLab performs all under the same umbrella. So let's get started and see what GitLab is all about. So GitLab is a web-based DevOps platform that uh, supports the complete software development lifecycle, which helps teams to adopt DevOps practices more efficiently. So in layman terms, you can think of GitLab as a one-stop solution, but it's not just another code repository or a deployment tool. What makes GitLab really powerful is that it supports the entire SDLC, software development lifecycle. From the moment you start planning a project all the way to your deployment, monitoring, and even securing your applications. It brings everything under the same roof. Next, it says it allows users to handle all key project activities such as planning, coding, monitoring, and ensuring security from a single interface. So likewise, I just said it's a one-stop solution which takes care of everything. Planning, coding, monitoring, and which also ensures the security from the single interface. Next, it says that rather than being a bulky application, GitLab follows a modular approach where each part is designed to perform a specific task effectively. So, now, here's something I find really cool about GitLab. Basically, it's just not a monolithic application. Uh, that means it's not built as one big bulky system trying to do everything at once. Instead, GitLab follows a modular philosophy. Each component or feature is built to perform a specific task. That makes it more efficient and easier to use. And it is very easy to maintain it. So next it says it includes a Git repository manager with built-in tools for issue tracking, continuous integration, and continuous deployment. So this is another uh, standout feature of GitLab, uh, which provides the Git repository manager. So if you have used Git, GitHub or Bitbucket before, you will feel right at home. Uh, it's almost a same interface, what it provides there uh, with GitLab. You will get a complete solution uh, with the version control, issue tracking, merging the request, creating the branches. Most importantly, the CI CD, all at the one place. You don't need to install separate plugins or use different tools for continuous integration or deployment. It's all integrated and ready to use. Next, it says GitLab supports both public and private projects, offering flexible options through free and paid plans. So what also nice is the flexibility GitLab offers. It supports both public and private repositories. So whether you are an open source contributor or part of a corporate team working on a confidential project, GitLab has covered you. It also comes in free and uh, paid versions, which is great because you can start using it without any cost and scale up as per your business requirements. Let's jump on to the next slide. Now a little bit of background. 
GitLab was created in 2011 by Dmitry Zaporozhev, a web developer from Ukraine. It was started uh, as a small project which quickly gained popularity in the market and today it's used by thousands of organizations around the world. What's uh, also interesting is that GitLab is having a unique release cycle. It usually rolls out updates on 22nd of every month uh, from the starting and that means it's consistently improving and adapting to the needs of its users. So let's come to the next point. It talks about uh, it operates as an open core project, uh, meaning the core platform is open source and free to use while uh, additional advanced features are available through paid plans. So that means the core part of the platform, the essential tools are open source and free to use. but there are also premium plans available that include advanced features, more support and uh, enterprise grade capabilities. So basically this model strikes a great balance. It's accessible to all the individuals. They can scale up uh, according to their business requirements. Now let's go ahead and create an account uh, on GitLab. So for that, I will just write up the Git lab sign up on the Google. Let's go to the sign up for GitLab and I'll write it my name as here Arun Akwa. So username will be I would like to keep it like now ticks. Username is available. That's great. I'm going to use one of my email IDs. and I agree to the terms and we'll continue from here okay so verification is successful let's move inside okay so it has sent some verification code let me just check that okay so let me confirm it okay so I have already got the code 610790 that's verifying my email id so it's completed now let's say you can finish the page okay great now let me select the role i'm selecting here as a devops engineer and uh, i want to use gitlab ci with my existing repository so create a new project I'm going to use myself on this GitLab account, so that is fine. So it is uh, giving me the project name and the group name here. Select in template. So I don't want to select any template right now. These are the predefined templates with different languages. Right. So let's just create the project. All right. Let's quickly walk through the GitLab UI. I will show you what options are available, how the process works and why using them can really make your workflow smoother. So here comes the first page, uh, the activity page. This is where you can see your profile info and your login username information. So now if we talk about what this page actually shows, it basically gives you the summary of all the recent actions like uh, code pushes, importing scripts from other repositories, commits or even uh, newly created branches. In short, it's just like a project log uh, that keeps the track of everything happening in your repository. Let's check out the project page. Let's click here. Okay. So on the left hand side, you will see bunch of options like manage, plan, code, build, secure, 
deploy we will see all these options uh, in detail in the later lectures uh, each of these sections has uh, its own set of tools and features to help you manage and work your project uh, smoothly from here uh, on the right hand side uh, you see the project name uh, the cloud text project just below that there is a option of branch so the by default branch you can see here it's the main is uh, set to main branch right now so now as a developer if you want to create separate branches for testing or fixing the bugs you can easily create or uh, do it here uh, there's an option from plus sign to create the branches and uh, assigning the tags as well now if you will look more in this particular option you can create the files you can upload the file or can create a directory as well so there are a few more options uh, like the history this shows you how many times commits has been made to this particular project so let's go to the history so you can see only the initial commit is there so we have just created the account so that's why there's only one it is showing up right now and uh, let's go back uh, we can see the find file you can if you are looking for a specific file inside the project this helps you search and locate it easily there is another option edit you can directly edit or modify any file right here in the browser super handy for a quick fixes <laughs> so and the next is uh, code and from here you can clone the project repository using either SSH or HTTP method depending on what works best for you now on the top right hand side corner you will see few options right so notification setting uh, this lets you manage alerts for any changes or updates happening within the repo and super helpful to keep uh, stay updated with the complete repository and the next is star icon uh, you can use uh, you can click here to mark the project as a favorite so it's easier to find later stage and next is a fork and this one is for contributors if someone wants to make their own copy of a repository to work on they can use the fork option and uh, over to the right side uh, we have few more options like uh, commit branch tags and how much uh, usage is there of the storage of this by this particular project uh, you can also see uh, the environment details and rest of the ci cd options here which we will see significantly once uh, we will uh, have any sort of a repo uh, created within this particular uh, GitLab account. All right, uh, that's all for today. Uh, in our next lecture, I will walk you through the GitLab dashboard uh, with some simple projects. Uh, we will explore the layout, understanding uh, how to create more repositories and uh, see what typically a project looks like in the GitLab. Plus, we will uh, deep dive into the most exciting part, which is uh, CI CD uh, within the GitLab. Till then, uh, stay connected and keep learning. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel for the latest videos. Stay tuned.